It's time for Football at Four with 97.3 ESPN.com's Andrew DeCecco. My first allegiance is what will be best for the Philadelphia Eagles and our fans for the next three, four, five years. Powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios. It's football at four. Football at four, powered by the Inside the Birds podcast and brought to you by Dr. Lyle M. Back. For everything from skincare to cosmetic surgery, go to ilovelyleback.com or call 856 Makeover for Dr. Lyle M. Back, proud sponsor of football at four. Andrew DeCecco is in the house today for today's edition of football at four. And he, like all guests, appear via the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. And he is with me now here on a football at four Tuesday as he joins me here on the Sports Bash on 97.3 ESPN and the free mobile app. What's going on, Andrew? Hey, Mike. Doing well. How are you? All is well, my man, as uh, we are inching closer to free agency and everything else that is going on uh, in this offseason for uh, not only the Eagles, everybody else is, uh, you know, in an interesting spot. We're seeing some moves being made, some big names, you know, I feel like it's going to be very interesting. We've been talking a lot about some of the the veteran players that the Eagles might have to release or figure out how to restructure guys like Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, Lane Johnson, uh, Brandon Brooks. But I guess the one question to start off with is, like, you see a guy like Kyle Van Noy who's going to be released today. Would you think that the Eagles can be a player for any of those type of guys, or is their financial situation going to basically preclude them from adding these guys who end up getting, you know, the short end of the stick because of all the financial restraints that everybody's going through? Well, their financial situation really hampers uh, their ability to kind of lure some of the more prominent free agents there, obviously. And, guys are more willing to kind of mold themselves into, you know, being able to take less to come to a team that's at least a contender. And the Eagles are obviously far from that. So they really don't have, uh, it's not really a desirable landing spot at this current time. And they're going to have to do some restructuring and get creative with how they move their money around because they need to add some depth, some depth pieces, uh, particularly at the backup quarterback position, uh, you can add a veteran uh, outside corner. I think you could use some uh, to bolster the depth there. But I mean, I, I just don't know what kind of player you're going to be able to bring in uh, with such a limited cap space. Yeah, I know uh, Van Noy's a guy that I really liked when he was coming out of BYU. Uh, BYU, yeah, yeah, and he signed that big deal with the Dolphins. But obviously, everybody's got these cap problems because of the way the cap got lowered. Uh, I think he would be an interesting guy, but uh, obviously, as you just kind of stated, they're they're in some cap problems themselves. Obviously, second worst cap situation in the league, which means they're going to have to do most of their help with bottom end free agents and, of course, the draft. So let's look at a couple draft things as we're getting ready. Uh, as I know, you're doing a lot of draft stuff for Inside the Birds. Um, when you look at the quarterback situation, number six, obviously, Jalen Hurts. The team took him number fifty three. There are a lot of variables here, but. Uh, if Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, Justin Fields is there at number six, how do you kind of compare Hurts to those guys? Well, the one player that I would say that is decidedly better than Jalen is Justin Fields, and that's the only player, if the Eagles are going to go that route and look for a quarterback, he's the only player to me that makes sense because he's more mechanically sound than Jalen is right now. He's a more polished, accurate passer. He has a stronger arm. He delivers the ball with more velocity, obviously. So these are certain qualities that, that you just see right off the bat. And, you know, he has similar issues that Hurts has as far as processing and, and, and reading defenses, but that's what you'd expect from a rookie. But, I mean, from a mechanical standpoint and, and just the, the poise, he has that. And, yeah, he's a little bit bigger than Jalen and has a, has a stronger arm. So I think he can make, throw, uh, make throws at all three levels. Um, Zach Wilson and Trey Lance, those guys are intriguing, but I don't know how how much better they are than Jalen is at this stage. And I don't know that if you're in a position at pick number six to roll the dice on a quarterback. I mean, last time we spoke, we talked about all the that Patrick Mahomes, I believe, was the first was the only quarter, first round quarterback to win a Super Bowl in however many years that you mentioned. But I mean, it is a crapshoot when you're looking at that position, and the Eagles have so many holes all over the roster that I don't think you can afford another year of playing quarterback musical chairs when you have a player who, let's say, a corner 
or a wide receiver like Jamar Chase. These guys can help you right now, and you need to start building the roster. And you'll find out sooner or later if Jalen Hurts is the guy. But if not, you'll likely have an opportunity to get that quarterback next year. Yeah, so, all right, that's the draft side of things. What about the veteran side of things? There's been some talk about Marcus Mariota. I've read uh, Jacoby Brissett's name. Even Ryan Fitzpatrick, who said, you know, uh, he wants to go to a place where he has a chance to start. I don't know how financially uh, they can fit those guys in, but if – if they don't draft a guy, they're going to have to bring a veteran quarterback in. So they got to figure out a way to bring a veteran guy in. But do you think that's a better way to go? Bring in an established veteran, have them compete, um, or maybe you know maybe not so much compete, but just be the safety net. Well, if I'm the Eagles, you don't want to rely on adding another rookie quarterback to a, a quarterback room that only has Jalen Hurts right now. You need a veteran voice in there to kind of coach him, guide him show him the way, help him learn Nick Sirianni's offense. And I think when you look at what, what all those qualities, you're looking at a guy like Ryan Fitzpatrick, who I'm not exactly sure how many, uh, how many suitors he's going to have on the open market given his age. Uh, and there's other options out there, especially in the draft. And, and you mentioned Jacoby Brissett, who is, who is going to be a really tantalizing option for many teams because of he does have some upside and he's, 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 a, he's, a, he's much younger. But I think Ryan Fitzpatrick offers uh, a player kind of like Josh McCown, who's been in so many different systems that can really help him, Jalen, uh, adapt and, and help the offense kind of everybody get on the same page. And I think that would be a, a valuable option. And I don't know how much he's actually going to, you know, I don't think the team's going to have to break the bank to get a guy like Ryan Fitzpatrick in there. So, I mean, that's, that name to me makes the most sense. Uh, I would have interest in Brissett. You wouldn't? I mean, he played for Sirianni. He knows the – like, don't most of the time these coaches tend to go with the guy that they know and, and bring somebody they're familiar with? Yeah, sure. But I, I think that Jacoby Brissett's going to have more suitors and he's going to you know command more money than Mar- Ryan Fitzpatrick on the open market. And I don't know if the Eagles are in a position to do that. If they can, I mean, by all means, yes, go for him. But I, I, I do think that Jacoby Brissett – has starting ability, uh, bottom and bottom tier starter, granted, but I do think that he'll, you know, I think he should have that. He's going to look for that opportunity because I do think that he has the skills to be a starter. Uh, I want to ask you particularly about a lot of people are asking me about Micah Parsons. We talked to Jeff yesterday. He doesn't think the Eagles would go that route. That's just not historically what they've done. But another question that keeps coming up is what if you trade down is there another linebacker in this particular draft in the first round or someplace else that you would say, don't take Parsons at six. You can get this guy either in later on if you move out or somebody that you might target in round number two. Well, yeah, I, I agree with Jeff. I, I don't really, given you know, the Eagles history, it's not likely that they'll take a guy like Michael Parsons there. Although I know you, that you've expressed that that's the area that you would like to see them, you know, address with that number six pick. I, I like a guy like Missouri's Nick, um, Nick Bolton. He's someone that played all three positions, all three linebacker positions in college, a little bit shorter. Um, about the least like six foot goes about two thirty two, but he's very fast, has the range, terrific in pass coverage. Might not be a three-down linebacker right away, but I think that he's going to contribute to, to a defense right away that has very high upside. And I think he's going to be, if it weren't for his slighter build, I think he would be a surefire first-round pick. Could end up sliding right to where the Eagles pick at the top of the second round. And I think he, should, he would be an option there. Also, LSU's Jabril Cox is probably one of my favorite guys. I had him going originally to the Eagles with the 70th pick in the third round. Now I'm starting to see... Uh, that, that might not be a realistic possibility. I think his stock's going to continue to soar as we move forward in the pre-draft process. He might be getting see his see his stock catapult in the back end of the second round. Um, I like his size and he, his skill set translate translates very well to the current NFL um, to current NFL defenses. That you really need to have that versatile pass coverage acumen to cover these hybrid tight ends and running backs and be able to cover and, and flow sideline to sideline. I think he gives them that. So those are a couple guys there that I would look at back end of the, if you were to trade down the first or look in the second and possibly even the third round. What's the first, like, what's the, if you trade it down, you know, six, seven, uh, you're at six, if you're going seven, eight, nine, what's an area that you feel like you would be able to still get an impact player? 
So by, by, by my estimation, I think the top 10, I think you're going to see that's when I, I think you're going to see the corners, uh, Patrick Sertan, Caleb Farley. I think those guys are going to round out the top 10. I think that at six, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure that either of those guys would be the best player available at six. However, if you were to trade down and go for, you know, seven, eight, seven, eight range, something like that, nine, even you're going to get a top tier corner and pick up, you know, additional assets and, that's not bad because you're going to get a top outside corner um, without having to reach for one at, at, at six. If you're going to, you're going to have some teams that are going to be ready to jump and get to that six spot if they have something that they really covet, like one of the quarterbacks. So um, there's going to be talent there. I mean, you can even consider Kyle Pitts. I know that name has been brought up a lot, but if you trade down into the nine range or eight, Kyle Pitts is a guy that I would give serious consideration to. In your opinion, what is the deepest position in this year's draft? Well, it's actually very well balanced. Uh, I think that the linebacker position is much deeper than it has been. The receiving, the receivers are pretty deep. Uh, I like the offensive tackles in this in this class. Uh, the quarterbacks are more top heavy in this draft, but I, I mean it, it's pretty well balanced. I mean, I was going over the first round um, just off the top of my head, and it, it's you're gonna it, uh, last year was the historically deep wide receiver class. I believe there was 13 guys that went in the first two rounds. And the year before that, it was very heavy on the defensive line. But when I look at the identity for this year, it's pretty well balanced throughout. Uh, which means, you know, getting more picks, trading back to get more picks could be the best way to go. Um, and, you know, I guess it all depends on what their draft board looks like and who would be, they're still at number six and how far back they would feel comfortable. But I guess one question would be, you know, you mentioned Pitts, and if he, let's say he's on their board at number six and he's the highest rated guy, does that say to you, all right, we should trade out of the spot or you just take Pitts? I think that they need to go with the, go with their board, stick with it. If that's their guy at six, then take it and don't overthink it because a lot of times the Eagles have really um, – have really thrown a wrench into their draft plans by trying to outsmart everybody. And obviously the results speak for themselves. I, I think that they need to stay true to their draft board. And, um, you know, if Pitts is, like I said, like in your scenario, if Pitts is their six, you know, is their guy at six, then don't think you can, don't get cute and trade down and think that you're going to be able to get him at eight or nine, because that's what you think that the league views him as, right. you know, you take him right, you take him and you don't think, uh, think twice about it. Yeah. I just, and you just kind of brought up like, you know, it would, they say, okay, Pitts is the best player, but we don't really, I mean, I don't know. You might, where do you feel like, do we really need that position? Now I like Pitts as more than just a tight end. So because mm-hmm. he's the best player on our board, that would tell us we can move out of this spot. Now, you know what I'm saying? Like, as opposed to, all right, the best player on our board is, is Chase. We could really use that, so we'll stay here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it's a dangerous game to play if you're the Eagles. Like, if you're at six and you, and you have Jamar Chase as your next best player at that spot, you take him. If you have Kyle Pitts rated out above Jamar Chase, yeah, uh, and he's and he doesn't fit that wide receiver mold that you're looking for, you you take Kyle Pitts and you figure it out because Kyle Pitts can be much more than a tight end. We've mentioned that on here before, and. You know, it, it all it all depends. It, it depends on how their board is, but I, I don't think that they should kind of um, kind of shift their opinions based on based on need. That's right. the recipe for disaster. Yeah, I, I did like so watching Pitts in games. I'm a fan of Pitts, and I like him, and I would probably be okay taking him. The more I watch him just on tape by himself, I'm thinking, man, if I could get my hands on this guy, what a what a tremendous uh, uh, weapon he would be in your offense. Like he is. The, mm-hmm. the modern weapon in today's game. He just can do everything. Yeah, and that's why getting a linebacker with a, with a, that has, you know, all these different, you know, traits, unique traits, and, and especially in pass coverage is so important because you're seeing more and more guys like a Kyle Pitts that can be moved around and used a myriad of different ways that you need to have a guy. That's why a guy like Micah Parsons is so valuable. He's yeah. not just a linebacker. He's the type of guy that's going to be the answer to covering some guys like Kyle Pitts. Yeah, uh, Parsons, Pitts, those two guys do things that other guys at that position don't do. They're so intriguing. Uh, Patrick Sertain, I wouldn't say he's different than others. Uh, you like Caleb Farley uh, better than Sertain, right? Yeah, I do. I, I think that his upside um, is – 
far superior than Patrick's. I think Patrick is safe is the safer option. Caleb, of course, has the uh, you know a little bit of an injury background in college. He did the non-contact ACL in 2017 and the lingering back issue in 2019 that forced him out of two games. But um, I mean, he's a ball hawk, and that's what the Eagles really need. He's a ball hawk. He comes up with turnovers. He yeah, he played in 20, 23 games at Virginia Tech. That might not be uh, a large enough sample size for some. But to me, uh, he showed a lot in that time, and he has the prototypical size. Just uh, it, it, you know, the measurables are there. It's it just uh, I, I really like his upside, and I think he offers um, the most upside of all the corners in this class. Now I, I got to ask you this because one position that I haven't heard a whole heck of a lot about is safety. And I was thinking about the other day. The Eagles might need two new safeties. So is safety not a position that you can consider at number six? There's not a safety, in my opinion, that you, that you should even consider taking it. Right? Not that not, high. Not six. that not high. To mention, is there a trade not to mention, that, not, that, and Unless it's like – um, unless you're looking at like a, in the years past, you go way back, you look at a guy like Eric Berry or something like that. There's not an Eric Berry type safety in this draft. Uh, a Derwin James, uh, if you want to look at more recently. Um, I, I mean, you're, you're going to have opportunities to get a guy like a Caden Stearns from Texas or Paris Ford from Pitt. You can get those guys in the third, fourth round that are going to be, uh, I, I like them more than I like Kayvon Wallace, for example, who was taken in the fourth round. I think if they offer a high upside, I see Kayvon Wallace more of a rotational third safety that can contribute in sub packages and, and be a special team standout. But um, yeah, I mean Richie Grant from from uh, UCF will be a second round guy. He'll be he's another option. Um, there's there's just uh, you're going to have you're going to have some choices, but definitely not any consideration. And uh, and with their sixth pick, yeah, that that is. Uh, I was just because we were going through certain things about the defense yesterday, and I said, you know, McLeod's coming off ACL. Mills is most likely not. I mean, if you resign him, fine, but if you don't, your two starting safeties need to be replaced. You're not going to take mm-hmm. one at six. You don't want to start two. You know, if you take one in the second round and one in with one of your two third round picks, you don't want to start two rookies playing safety next to each other. So that's going to be a very tough area to fix this all season, it seems like. Oh, yeah, in a big way. I mean, and just kind of assessing the position, I think you, I think it's a no-brainer to re-sign Jalen Mills. As much of a backlash as he gets, and as, you know, he kind of draws the ire of fans. He really has done an adequate job, in my opinion. And I think that you re-sign him, given, given just the, the, the bare coverage situation of the safety position, I think you have to re-sign him. You have Kayvon Wallace, who you drafted last year. You see how, um, you know, uh, Jonathan Gannon and, and those guys can kind of develop him. And then I think you add a young safety to that mix. And um, they do like, I mean, I know I, I can say that Tim Schwartz like Marcus Epps. We'll see if this, how this new coaching regime feels about that. But as a fourth safety, I mean, he's a good special teams player. Um, so, I mean, I, I do anticipate them maybe getting a, uh, a low, a low end veteran free agency to maybe kind of round that out and fight for a roster spot and definitely addressing it through the draft. All right. Uh, they're good, good draft stuff. We'll continue with it as, uh, the draft, uh, about two months away. Now we're getting closer to the NFL draft, but the Eagles with that number six pick, you're going to start obviously, uh, zoning in a lot more on, there's a lot of positions we just talked about. They need a corner. They need a linebacker. They need a, uh, now, you like tackle. I, I am not a fan of taking a tackle. I know you like Sewell. I, I don't not like them. I just don't. I, I feel like uh, they have so many other areas. They have enough in-house options to try to get through a year before they need to take a tackle. You don't agree with that? Uh, I mean, you're banking on Andre Dillard. You're counting Andre Dillard as one of those in-house options, and you're counting Lane Johnson, who's – Missed some time with injury, so to kind of you know you're rolling the dice if you're banking on those guys to be there when you have a a, a, a you know a phenomenal prospect in Penny Soul that shouldn't even be available at six. So I think if he is, you run to the podium and make him your pick, and he's going to be that franchise left tackle when in future all pro. Hey, so I like I the idea. There, I ahead. like the idea if I if I don't have so many, but I have my Alada who I'm willing to give a shot. You mentioned Dillard who I drafted, I traded up to get. I still don't know if I have an answer on him yet. Uh, I, I'm not saying I don't like Sewell, but I feel like I have so many other problems that I at least would give Mylotta and Dillard a shot this year 
look, Lane Johnson is a guy that I've paid a lot of money to to be there for at least another three or four. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I can't really just say I'm done with him. Therefore, I say I like Soul, but I got enough in-house options. I have too many other holes. Yeah, it's not so much saying you're done with Lane Johnson, but it's more so protecting yourself because the Eagles have made that mistake in other positions. Deshaun Jackson, Alshon Jeffrey, we're good at receiver. J.J. Ortega, Whiteside, we're good at receiver. And then uh, when things when their plan A doesn't work out, all of a sudden your quarterback struggles and the offense has no outside weapons because you kind of oversold what you had or rated them a little bit too highly. And I think if you go into the season and say, yeah, we got first former first-round pick in Andre Dillard, we got Mylotta, who, who was great in his sample size that we saw from him, showed a lot of encouraging signs of development. And then we got Lane Johnson. He'll be back from his, from his ankle injury. We'll, we're all set there. And then, you know, all it takes is an injury or two. And given the Eagles history, I think that's fair to expect. And then all of a sudden you have a quarterback who's, you know, under siege constantly every weekend. It's hard to evaluate anybody when you have no offensive line. And if the Eagles have, if you're going by the best player available, I have to think that if he's there at six, He's at the top of the list. All right, that one you and I will uh, be debating over the next couple of months here, I'm sure, more. Andrew DeCecco, Football at Four, powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Good stuff as always, Andrew. Looking forward to more draft conversation, the NFL offseason, and everything here on Football at Four, powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Thanks, man. You bet. Take care. All right, he'll be back on Thursday. We will continue uh, to look at the draft and get closer uh, to the offseason free agency About two weeks away. Opens up on Wednesday the 17th. NFL free agency, I believe, is the day. Football 4 brought to you by Dr. Lyle M. Back. Everything from skincare to cosmetic surgery. But I love LyleBack.com or call 856-MAKEOVER for Dr. Lyle M. Back. Proud sponsor of Football at 4.